Hey guys, welcome to another video. This time with sound on the Lexus GS450H transmission. This transmission has two electric motors in it. One in the front and one in the back. It came out of a Lexus hybrid vehicle. Today's video is going to be on the transmission wiring harness. Now, this is one of two wiring harnesses that you will need um, this harness uh, does not come with the inverter plug. A lot of people think it does and they mistake these ECU plugs for, for the actual um, inverter plug. They look similar, but they won't work. So I went out and I bought this harness on eBay. I paid $250 for it. And I'm going to talk about why that was a good decision. Now I'm in California, so things are really expensive here, okay? They wanted 300 bucks. I haggled on eBay and I offered 200. They came back with 275, yada, yada, yada. So I ended up with $250, and this video hopefully justifies why I bought it. <clears throat> the harness goes, goes by um, the name of Engine Wire. All right? It's not called Transmission Harness. It's not called the Engine, engine uh, Harness. It may be sort of lost in the translation from Japanese to English or something like that, but I downloaded the official manual from Lexus. looked at the names and it is called engine wire so google that that so that's how I googled it and then I uh, found the part number and actually it comes with two different part numbers one part number is for 2007 through 2010 and the other part number is uh, 2009 to 2011 I believe the reason I know that is because when I was talking to the guys on eBay they usually will ask you for your VIN, and that's sort of a double-edged sword. One case, you get specific things for your VIN, but sometimes it limits you from the broad range of 2007 to 2011, of four years or so, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, five years to choose from uh, parts, right? Now, this wire, the wire harness will work from the 2007, 2010. I will demonstrate that to you. But they look up the VIN because cars can have so many options. And when I called a dealership to talk to them about this, they asked, well, what kind of headlights does your Lexus have? And I was like, are you kidding me? It's an engine wire harness. What do I care about headlights? And he said, well, the features do make a difference and, and it's not just a year thing. Anyway, I'll put the part numbers in the description because I don't know them uh, by heart. And uh, yeah, let's talk about this harness. So I didn't make a video on thinning it out, okay? But I already did. And let me show you something, all right? <laughs> this here, this is all the stuff we don't need. And what fell down, I'm glad it did. <clears throat> what fell off is a completely separate harness with its own part number that is attached to the engine wire harness, and this is for fuel injectors. And this is why uh, the uh, auto records, dismantlers, and eBay sellers uh, call this the engine harness, engine wire harness, whatever, and not really the transmission harness. What we want it for is because they see these um, they see these fuel injectors on it. They recognize that, and they may recognize the um, coil wires or plugs as well because this was a V6 uh, originally uh, gasoline powered engine so when you're asking for a Lexus GS450H transmission wi wiring harness they won't know what that really is because this is really called an engine wire right you could call the engine wire harness that would be better than looking for a transmission harness so I hope that helps <coughs> just want to say that my videos will be a little bit repetitive because if someone stumbles upon a video, I don't want to send them to another video and then another video to get the information they need. Hopefully they're getting everything answered in that one video. 
So let me share something else with you. This is how you can identify this, this harness, okay? I was tempted to look for the inverter plug on it, but we already know that's not what you do. What you look for is this wire harness bracket or housing. It's made out of plastic and it might stand out in the pictures. Now, some sellers won't even post pictures of the harness. Some don't pull the harness till you pay for it. Some will just do low resolution picture of it on, in the box or a bin or on the ground. Um, so, but if you do see some pictures of it, this is what you want to look for and I'm going to unplug this and walk you through what's on there. So hopefully you can see this. I apologize for the lighting. I'm learning about making videos and I'm learning what a pain in the ass it all is. Okay, so what I just unplugged is these two plugs here. They're both identical. They're gray. And they are um, for the MG1 and MG2 resolvers. So MG stands for motor generator. So MG1 is the, is the first motor generator in here. It doesn't drive the, the output shaft, okay? Its job is to work as a starter. And now it has other jobs as well, but one is to just act as a starter, like, like in the conventional uh, vehicle, conventional gasoline-powered engine, you use electricity to uh, use the starter to spin the engine to help it start. So that's what MG1 does. And in its hybrid OEM form, it never drives the output shaft, okay? It never spins this, all right? <coughs> MG2, which sits in the back here, it's a bigger motor, that's the one that spins the output shaft. Now, some of you who already may know about these transmissions know that there is a way to get them both to spin the output shaft. You do that by locking out the input shaft on MG1, and then it says, uh-oh, I better help MG2 drive the output shaft. We're going to get to that. We will talk about it. This next plug, this next plug here, <coughs> I believe it's for the shift solenoids, okay? It's a gray plug. And the fourth one on this side, it's a little black one on a tail shift. This one here, excuse my lighting. <coughs> this one here on the end is vehicle speed sensor, okay? So I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll have pictures on my build thread that might be better. But the point is, you want to look for this kind of sort of squiggly S-shaped uh, gray harness uh, casing whatever with these four plugs on it this is what goes on this side <coughs> now <coughs> the reason this is this is gold this is solid gold the reason I bought this harness is because although I can make you can buy these plugs and these plugs and I can buy some wires like this automotive grade and I'm, I don't mind tedious work and I can make that part of the harness but what is very difficult is <coughs> these twisted pair shielded twisted pair black cables these are the resolver cables and as you can see when I thinned out the harness I realized that oh man this is great there are how can I show you these plugs matching plugs on the other ends that will plug in directly into the primary wiring harness that I also bought which does have the inverter plug on it so this alone is worth the 250 bucks to me. I've heard other guys, talented guys, electricians who've built these harnesses themselves from scratch and said, you know, they would never do it again. It was very hard, very difficult. There's just too much, too much room for error. When you're doing an EV conversion, you're going to have such a steep learning curve with all the other nonsense that make it as easy as you can. And I thought of this funny analogy, you know, um, we're, I'm building an electric vehicle, right? So why am I having a hard time spending over $550 on two wiring harnesses, right? $250 on this one, $300 on the other. 
It would be like buying a sailboat and not wanting to spend money on, on proper sails, right? So I'm okay with that. You know, I know that was expensive. I paid $700 for this transmission on eBay. All right, I maybe already said that. I, I did a couple takes of this video trying to get the sound right, so I don't know what I said when. But this is free freight shipping, which means that you need to have a loading dock and a forklift. So it pays to have friends that have that. My buddy uh, allowed me to ship it to his company, and then I gave that forklift operator 20 bucks, and he shoved this on a pallet into my wife's Honda Pilot. Don't tell her that. All right, so we have these four plugs on this side. This is the driver's side of the transmission. And if you thin out the harness carefully, you will get the plugs on the other end. So when you go to wire your custom um, open source VCU, there is no cutting, no splicing, and no crimping. These will just plug in beautifully. All right. On the other side of the transmission, which I can't show you in this video, maybe I'll flip it around later. It's hard to slide this thing even on the coaster. Well, maybe I'll give it a try. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bump there. It just doesn't like it. Come on, making me look bad. All right. This is live TV, folks. What happened to that plug now? Great. Ah. So now we're looking at the other side. This is the passenger side. And I know I'm repeating myself, but now we can take a closer look at something who is super important over here. Can you guys see that? That is what we call the oil pump. How can I make that? Right there. <coughs> and it's very important that that comes with your transmission when you buy it. Guys want $1,500 for this stupid electric oil pump. This transmission has two oil pumps in it. One's internal, mechanical. When there was a gasoline-powered engine on it, it would spin that pump, like in a standard automatic transmission, and use the transmission fluid to cool and lubricate and help shift, right? Well, when it was in hybrid mode and the engine was shut off, the electricity would power. It would also be an orange cable, which is high voltage. It would power the oil pump. So make sure you get that. <coughs> and when your transmission comes with the oil pump, it will most certainly come with the oil pump harness. Anything black wire harness is low voltage, 12 volts. Anything orange is high voltage, like 